Good afternoon. Uh, today we are going to uh, present uh, our co uh, concrete um, technologies webinar in conjunction uh, with Turkish Redemix Concrete Association. Uh, my name is Gökhan Yazıcı. I am an assistant professor of civil engineering at Istanbul Kültür University. Uh, today, uh, Aslı Özboran um, Tarhan uh, will help us understand, um, will deliver us the recent developments in concrete. Uh, this seminar was originally intended for second year uh, civil engineering students to get a better understanding of con concrete and its properties, and also to understand the developments in uh, concrete. So without any further ado, I would like to give um, the um, Aslan uh, the go ahead for our presentation for today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Yazıcı. Uh, first of all, uh, we would like to thank you very much for this kind invitation to have this uh, webinar together with uh, Istanbul Kültür University. So my name is, is Aslı Özbora. I'm the Secretary General of the Turkish Redemix Concrete Association. And additionally, I'm the Technical Manager of the European Redemix Concrete Organization, AMCO. So uh, let me start. Uh, with my presentation. I hope that you can see my screen without any issue. Okay. So, uh, Turkish Redemix Concrete Association is an uh, NGO uh, founded in 1988. Actually, we have uh, 70 members and these 70 members produce the 60% uh, 65% uh, of the total production of concrete in Turkey as i told you uh, there is a, a european organization called armco european redemix concrete organization thbb has been member of armco since 1991 and uh, our uh, president uh, the president of the thbb mr Ishik, uh, used to be the former uh, president of AMCO for the period 2016-2020. As THPB, we try to help producing high quality, durable, sustainable concrete to have safe and resilient buildings across Turkey. Uh, as THBB, uh, we work hard and effectively with our employees. Actually, we have 31 employees. Uh, and as I told you, we have been serving the concrete industry for 32 years. We have uh, actively four different committees composed of different uh, experts from our industry. Uh, we have provided trainings to more than 16,000 industry employees in these 32 years. As THBB, we organize trainings and seminars, especially before the a pandemic period, we used to uh, organize face-to-face -face, uh, seminars uh, all around Turkey. In the last two years, uh, we have provided practical, economic, and safe driving trainings to more than 1,600 operators, again, all around Turkey. Uh, I will give more details on this uh, council called Concrete Sustainability Council. Uh, and. Uh, we organized uh, congresses, fairs, and competitions uh, during these uh, 32 years. Um, and we have uh, reached uh, approximately uh, 15,000 followers on our social media channel. Uh, here you can see the numbers as of November 2020. So the number of followers increased since then. Uh, if we look more in detail to the activities carried out by THPB, as I told you, we organize congresses and exhibitions, international ready-mix concrete congresses, international ready-mix cement aggregate construction technologies and equipment fairs, and we organize award contests. Uh, of course, as an association, we try to promote appropriate uh, concrete production and appropriate uh, applications of concrete. 
So, and we try to emphasize that concrete is a material that could be used without any hesitation for architectural purposes. So we organize architecture awards. Uh, of course, it's important to have uh, sufficient awareness concerning the occupational health and safety in our industry. So we organize Blue Helmet Occupational Health and Safety Awards. Similarly, to uh, increase the awareness uh, concerning the environmental aspect, uh, we've organized environmental awards. Uh, so you can see some pictures uh, taken during these events. Uh, as THPB, we publish a B-month magazine called Hazar uh, in Turkish it means uh, ready mixed. Uh, we have quite an active website, visited over uh, 50,000 every year. We organize trainings, courses, seminars, not only for civil engineers, architects, but for track mixer operators, pump operators, and so on. Uh, we are officially recognized by the Vocational uh, Qualifications Authority in Turkey, and um, we are uh, issuing uh, vocational qualification certificates for concrete workers and concrete pump operators. I just mentioned the Concrete Sustainability Council. Let me first of all emphasize the importance of sustainability for the ready mixed concrete industry. As you know, uh, the concrete, uh, uh, concrete is the most widely used construction material, and this is the second most widely used material just after uh, water. So uh, we should fulfill uh, the requirements concerning the sustainability. What does it mean, sustainability? By sustainability, you should focus on meeting uh, the needs of the, future, uh, of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. I just want to share with you some uh, numbers on concrete. 70% uh, of the world's population lives in concrete structures and the average person consumes nine kilograms of concrete per day. So uh, on your uh, right hand side, you can see a curve, uh, the population versus years showing the concrete consumption within these, uh, within these years. So you can see that uh, with the increasing uh, population uh, number, the need for concrete increase. And, uh, of course, these are some assumptions, some estimations, but up to 2050, there will be an increasing trend. Uh, the required uh, quantity of concrete uh, will uh, reach quite a, a huge amount uh, during the following years. So uh, I emphasize once again that uh, the sustainability aspect of concrete is quite crucial. Here you can see also another important uh, concept, the circularity, the circular economy. Uh, cement and concrete should be treated uh, within the circularity concept. So starting from uh, the use of raw materials, uh, clinker production, cement production, concrete production, concrete in use and at the end of life of concrete uh, and reinforced concrete buildings, uh, the circularity concept should be taken into consideration. Uh, sometimes you should use uh, waste byproducts. Uh, sometimes you should recycle aggregates uh, within this uh, loop. Uh, concrete, uh, concrete Sustainability Council, it's a uh, global uh, system uh, and the council was founded in Geneva, in, in the Switzerland, in November 2016. Uh, as I told you, the uh, sustainability of concrete is crucial. But till now, there wasn't any system proving that concrete is sustainable. Uh, and by this system founded by this council, it's the first and only established certification system for concrete, and not only for concrete, including its uh, uh, supply chain. Uh, actually, as THPB, we are a member of the council and uh, within Turkey, we act as the regional system operator of the council. Our aim is just to uh, implement this system within Turkey. 
Of course, it's a system, it's a certification system and certification bodies are required. Uh, I will present also, I will uh, share with you some details on KGS, which is a certification body. KGS is a recognized, officially recognized uh, certification body of uh, Concrete Sustainability Council. Concrete is in competition with other materials benefiting from a better sustainable image, such as wood, especially in Europe. Uh, the CAC is putting the concrete sector in the driver's seat of defining sustainable concrete. So uh, by the system, uh, the aim is just to create a market pool for green concrete. Uh, and uh, the aim of the council is just to promote uh, sustainable construction with CSC certified concrete. It's quite a dynamic system. Uh, you probably heard about the green building labels such as green BGMD active in Germany, Envision, uh, uh, infrastructure uh, system, uh, quite used in the United States or LEED, and all of these green building labels uh, recognize officially this CSC system. Uh, it's a global system, as I told you, and uh, up to now, uh, 12, uh, including cement plants and concrete plants, were certified within Turkey by this system. So we are paying quite a, a lot of attention to this system. Okay, so let me go to the next slide. Uh, we have a laboratory uh, which is founded in 2006. It's an accredited uh, laboratory by the Turkish Accreditation Agency uh, located in the Techno Park of um, uh, Yildiz Technical University. Uh, all the uh, tests on concrete and its constituents can be performed within this laboratory. Uh, tests on fresh concrete, on hardening concrete, on hardened concrete, tests on its constituents such as aggregates, cement, mineral additives, chemical admixtures. Uh, we can carry out durability tests and we can provide calibration services to the stakeholders. Uh, as I told you, our laboratory was founded in 2006, but in 2019, we got a support, a fund uh, from Istanbul Development Agency, and we had the chance to enlarge the scope of our laboratory by testing uh, material characteristics of the existing buildings. At the end, it's possible to have the full-scale performance analysis of existing reinforced concrete buildings. Of course, uh, we should keep in mind that Istanbul, and not only uh, not only Istanbul, uh, the whole Turkey is in uh, uh, has some se seismic risks. So uh, we believe that uh, the performance analysis of the existing buildings are uh, is quite uh, crucial, taking this risk into consideration. Uh, by the performance analysis, uh, we can carry out durability performance and service life prediction analysis, and then the structural performance, uh, of course, being in compatibility with earthquake codes. So let me show you the basic steps. Of course, we should, uh, during a uh, during this analysis, we should take as a whole, not only the, the building itself, but of course, the characteristics of the soil, the characteristic of the building itself, uh, building survey and soil survey uh, cover this, uh, this, these steps. Uh, testing on materials that are used uh, for the building, uh, of course, we should uh, determine the strength of concrete, taking some cores, and sometimes uh, it's necessary to have some uh, correlations uh, between the core results together with non-destructive testing, such as ultrasonic pulse velocity or Schmidt hammer, rebound hammer. Uh, it's, it's important also, especially for specific uh, projects, to assess the durability performance of concrete uh, carrying out visual deterioration checks or taking cores for carbonation death or chloride profiles, carrying out petrographic analysis, uh, checking the concrete cover. Of course, the rebars that are used, the reinforcement should be checked, their location, their mapping should be obtained using uh, ground penetrating radar, the corrosion should be checked. 
the durability performance together uh, with the service life prediction are the uh, important uh, parameters uh, within this performance. And at the end, the 3D modeling and the dynamic structural performance analysis, which is uh, obtained. Uh, concerning the advanced durability test, there are some tests carried out on sites, such as track control, and classroom task velocity, which is a method of non-destructive uh, testing method, uh, the cover control, or the carbonation death. Uh, at the laboratory stage, uh, specimen uh, prepared on the course, we can obtain thin sections and petrographic analysis could be carried out on these thin sections, chloride migration test or carbonation death, water permeability or uh, freeze thaw analysis are the different uh, tests uh, that can be performed at the laboratory stage. I don't want to go into the details of this slide, but I just want to show you a specific analysis uh, which can be carried out on, uh, let's say, cement or mortar or uh, cement paste uh, specimens. It's the microstructural analysis, concrete petrography. Uh, by this specific analysis, uh, you uh, analyze your uh, thin sections using an electron microscope, uh, not an electron, an optic microscope, as you can see here. And uh, by this system, you can uh, judge the cement type that is used within your uh, concrete or the mineral additive that you use uh, in your concrete. You can assess the alkali silica reaction or the carbonation or the three thaw resistance. Uh, how the uh, entrained airs are distributed within the concrete, the properties of the aggregates that are used within the concrete, the CSH gel or calcium hydroxide crystals in cement paste, the aggregate cement interface and the embedded particles uh, within the concrete. All these analyses could be performed using the concrete petrography. Uh, some micrographs uh, taken by an optic microscope on your right hand side, you can see uh, some specimens uh, analyzed under ultraviolet light. Uh, these are epoxy impregnated uh, specimens. Uh, these specimens could be used to assess the water cement uh, ratio of your mix. So these are quite uh, sophisticated analysis. I don't want to get uh, into the details of this analysis. I just want to show you the general concept. We have uh, an enterprise called KGS that I mentioned uh, for the uh, CSC also. Uh, it's possible by this enterprise to inspect and certify the concrete and the related materials. The KGS is a European Union notified body. It's an approved uh, body by the Ministry of Urbanization. Uh, and uh, the Turkish Accreditation Agency product certification um, covers KGS. So concrete uh, within Turkey, if a producer uh, sells concrete to the market, the product should be uh, should have the G mark. It's a must. So KGS uh, carries out on-site audits. Uh, auditing the system and the products. So at the end, the producers obtain the G mark. So it's one of the most important responsibilities of the KGS. Uh, and of course, as I told you, it's a uh, formally recognized certification body. Uh, the uh, concrete standard EN206, it's, it's a non-harmonized standard. Standard. But for the other construction materials, such as cement, minerals, uh, mineral additives, or admixtures, or fibers, there are different harmonized standards covering the uh, relevant products. So for the market, uh, the C mark, of course, is important. And KGS, at the end of the audits, uh, carried out on these different uh, construction products issue also officially, formally, the CE mark. So it's another um, re responsibility of the KGS. As I told you, uh, formally, 
uh, recognized certification body of the Concrete Sustainability Council, uh, KGS is acting as a certification body of the CSC. Let me share uh, with you some sector statistics. Uh, this uh, graph shows you the ready mix concrete production in Turkey. Uh, as I told you, uh, THPB was found in 1988, and it was just by the end of 1988 that the ready mix concrete production started to increase within the years. Here you can see this trend. When we look to the uh, production in Turkey uh, by the end of 1980s, it was quite limited. Uh, but uh, with, the, with the years, you can see the increasing trend. Uh, and uh, actually, Turkey is the biggest producer in Europe. Uh, we have actually 900 batch plants uh, in Turkey. And the average concrete strength class used in Turkey is C3033. And SAM1 is the most widely used cement type for Turkey. Here we try to show uh, to you the uh, RMC production uh, in different countries. Uh, these are the data provided by AMCO. Here you can see in red. Uh, the ready mix concrete production in Turkey in 2018, 100 uh, million cubic meter and 77, cubic, uh, 77 million cubic meter of concrete uh, for the year 2019. Uh, when we compare these numbers to the uh, production uh, volume of other countries, uh, Turkey is the really biggest producer in Europe. Of course, there are so many projects going on in Turkey, so that it's normal to have um, such uh, such uh, amount of concrete produced within Turkey. Um, and of course, in addition to the quantity of concrete, it's important to emphasize the importance of the increased strength classes within the years. Parallelly to the increased amount of concrete, the strength classes used uh, used in in Turkey increased a lot also. Here you can see by the end of 1990s, uh, it was uh, mostly uh, used, uh, mostly used concrete, uh, used to be C20 and uh, values uh, smaller than C20. But by the end, you can see the increasing trend. Now, uh, as I told you, the most widely uh, used uh, concrete strength class is C30. And just uh, as a detail, um, according to the actual uh, earthquake code, um, the minimum strength class should be C25. Uh, so it's important also to have this increasing trend of uh, strength classes. Uh, let's look uh, briefly to the history of concrete. Uh, limestone blocks were used at Göbekli Tepe uh, 12,000 years ago. Lime and gypsum were used to make mortar in ancient uh, Egypt. So uh, ancient concrete users, the Romans used to be, baths, harbors, uh, Colosseum, uh, Pantheon, uh, were made of concrete. So uh, the history of concrete is quite old. Uh, these are some important dates uh, in, uh, for instance, in, 1000, uh, in 1824, the Portland cement uh, was patented in the United Kingdom. The first cement plant in the United Kingdom uh, were launched in 1848. Uh, the invention of uh, reinforced concrete in France, the first uh, reinforced concrete building in the United States, and first reinforced concrete bridge in the United States in 1893. Uh, some other important dates, ready mix concrete technology uh, in 1903 in Germany. Uh, we, can, uh, we can say that this is the first uh, uh, steps of the RMC. The first uh, reinforced concrete 
skyscraper in the United States uh, by 1903, first uh, reinforced concrete building in Turkey by 1905. Here you can see on your left hand uh, side uh, this building. Uh, another important, uh, some important dates, uh, Edison's concrete houses in 1910, Hoover them in 1930. Uh, we said that uh, concrete is quite old. Concrete is more than 1,000 years old. But rhythmic concrete is, compared to concrete, is relatively young. Uh, in 1875, lime sand mortar carried by car to building sites in Berlin. These were the, the, the first uh, attempts to have uh, RMC. And uh, an architect in Hamburg tries to uh, try to find a suitable way to produce and transport concrete by the beginning of the 19th. Uh, the first uh, patent for cooling concrete for transport dated of uh, 1903. First agitating equipment in 1907, or first concrete plants in Hamburg and Berlin in 1908. These are uh, some photos showing uh, these first uh, equip uh, agitating equipment or these first concrete plants in, uh, in Germany. Uh, once started, of course, good ideas spread fast. Uh, and in 1913, um, first delivery of fresh concrete in the United States, first delivery of fresh concrete in Denmark in 1926, first um, mixer in the United States by 1926, uh, in 1930s, first ready mixed concrete plants in the United Kingdom, fast growing industry in Eastern and Southern emerging countries, and uh, European ready mixed concrete organization founded in 1967. Uh, let me show you the first ready mixed concrete plants, uh, this one taken uh, in Alabama in the United States in 1936, and let me show the modern RMC plants Today, these photos are taken in, in Turkey, of course. Uh, concrete is used for different purposes, for dams, for skyscrapers, for uh, bridges, for buildings, and so on. And so it's, it's uh, quite easy to be adapted for uh, different and various purposes. Uh, let me go back uh, to the basic of concrete. What is concrete? Concrete is made of cement, water, aggregates, fine and coarse, chemical admixture, mineral additives, and uh, depending on the needs, sometimes fi fibers are incorporated. Uh, this, uh, this shows, this uh, summarizes the cement production. Uh, of course, raw material quarry, uh, all the uh, limestone, clay, marls, they are extracted, uh, then they are crushed and ground. Uh, you can see uh, these processes, you can see the fairing grinder, and then uh, it's uh, conveyed into the rotary kiln where uh, really high temperatures around 1450 degrees Celsius are uh, obtained and then we obtain clinker. Uh, in the rotary kiln, all the uh, basic phases such as a light, the lights, and so on are uh, obtained. And then clinker is ground with gypsum and if necessary with other additives, uh, grinded in cement uh, grinders, and then we obtain cement. Uh, this is just a photo showing the kiln the rotary kiln, just focusing on the kiln. And here you can see how uh, hot is the kiln. As I told you, it's around 1,500 degrees Celsius inside the kiln. Uh, the clinker that I mentioned, which is uh, ground by the gypsum to adjust the setting. Uh, I think you are familiar with the different cement types. Uh, this is a table uh, given in the cement standard EN197-1. Uh, of course, as you know, there are five principal uh, cement types. Of course, in total, there are uh, 27 uh, products, types of common cement. Uh, depending on the clinker, 
and the different main constituents, there are some, uh, some symbols that are used. But I just want to show you uh, something quite new. Uh, there is a new standard, but this time a non-harmonized standard, EN1975, just published in 2020. Uh, there are two newly, uh, let's say, uh, introduced cement types, STEM2CM, not covered by these harmonized standards, so you cannot see uh, on uh, this table. Uh, the clinker uh, percentage uh, varies between 50 to 65 percent, and other new type of uh, composite cement sent six, not covered by this uh, table either. And the clinker percentage is uh, uh, between 35 to 50 percent. The aim to introduce uh, these uh, new types of cement was to uh, reduce the environmental impact of cement. And by the introduction, by the use of these uh, new cement types, uh, it's possible to have uh, 50, uh, 35 to 65% of reduction uh, concerning the environmental impact of uh, cement. Uh, you probably heard about the uh, reduction of CO2 emissions, about the Green Deal, the uh, carbon neutrality and so on. So it's quite important to have cement with uh, less environmental impact. So uh, just an example, it's Portland Composite Cement SEM2. Uh, B shows, uh, let me go back to the table, um, with the increasing uh, percentage of the mineral additives that you are incorporating into your cement. If from A to C, you are following this, this order. Uh, and uh, P, P and L stands for the additive used. In this case, Puzolana P for natural Puzolana and L for limestone. And 32.5 R, uh, 32.5 is the 28th uh, day uh, compressive strength of your mortar and R for rapid, rapid strength gaining uh, cement. Another constituent of concrete is aggregates. Uh, fine and coarse aggregates are used uh, within concrete. Uh, concerning fine aggregates, it could be either natural or crushed with a Dmax less than uh, four millimeters. Uh, the coarse aggregates could be natural, such as gravel or crushed stone, with a Dmax larger than four millimeters. Uh, and other constituents of concrete uh, mineral additives, uh, we can mention fly ash, silica, fume, brown granulated blast furnace slag, or metacarin, calcine clay. These are uh, different uh, zolanas used uh, uh, in concrete. Uh, some properties of concrete incorporating mineral additives uh, for uh, long term high strength uh, after 28 days, better mechanical properties, better chemical resistance, uh, better, uh, better resistance against chloride, sulfate, and seawater, high performance against alkali silica reaction low permeability, good workability, low heat of hydration, which is ideal for mass concrete and uh, concreting during hot uh, weather at times. Another constituent of concrete, chemical admixtures. It's, it's a must, especially uh, these days where we intend to have strength classes quite high. Uh, water reducers, super plasticizers, air entrainers, accelerators, retarders, corrosion inhibitors, Breakage reducers or pigments that are incorporated into the concrete. Of course, I don't want to go into the details of each chemical admixtures, but let me uh, give some details on the most widely used uh, chemical um, admixtures, water reducers or super plasticizers. Uh, when you use uh, super plasticizers, you can reduce the mixing water. Uh, you can reduce the water cement, the water binder ratio. Uh, keeping the same strength class, the uh, same strength value, you can reduce the cement content. 
you can enhance the vo vocability just uh, uh, just uh, drawing showing the mechanism uh, the superplasticizers uh, have the steric repulsion and the electrostatic repulsion depending on the type sometimes both uh, repulsion uh, methods are used sometimes only electrostatic repulsion is used as i told you depending on the on the type of the uh, admixture uh, superplasticizer that you are using and in training agents uh, just to increase the freeze thaw durability of concrete you can increase the vocability of your concrete but unfortunately depending on the quantity of the uh, entrained air your strength values could be reduced air, vo air voids are micro sized but they are intentionally uh, entrained uh, airs not entrapped but uh, entrained uh, on purpose distribute homogeneously and separated from each other. The aim uh, when uh, water uh, freezes, then of course the volume, uh, there is a volume uh, increase. So by these uh, air voids, there is space uh, for, um, for the ice to expand without causing any crack to your concrete. Some images, uh, especially uh, I, I just want to draw your attention to the uh, picture on your right hand side. Here you can see two specimens. Uh, the one uh, exposed to freezing and thawing cycles, but without any air in training agents. You can see that uh, it's, uh, the specimen has swollen and it's it has been deteriorated, but the other one at the bottom, it's a specimen where air in training agent uh, where, uh, was uh, introduced, was uh, incorporated. So you can see, of course, uh, it was possible to lower the water binder content. And you can see that uh, the specimen hasn't been uh, deteriorated uh, compared to the other specimens. Uh, the compressive strength. I think you are familiar with this uh, term. It's the force per unit surface. It's just an example for C25, uh, 25 uh, Newton uh, per uh, square millimeter or 25 megapascal. Um, this uh, force is uh, applied to a uh, to a cylinder specimen of uh, 15 to 30 centimeters. Uh, and uh, it's, it's when we convert uh, to the uh, force applied for a cube uh, or com with a dimension of 15 uh, centimeter, uh, it's uh, 30 megapascal. Uh, as I told you, C25 uh, stands for the cylinder sample compressive strength in megapascal and 30 for the cube sample compressive strength in megapascal or in newton per uh, square uh, millimeter square. Uh, this table, uh, an extract uh, from the um, concrete standard EN206, the compressive strength classes, the minimum characteristic cylinder strength and the minimum characteristic cube strength. Uh, this example was already shown, C2530. Uh, water cement ratio is a critical parameter for the performance, of, not only for the strength, but for the durability characteristic of concrete also. Here uh, on this curve, you can see the uh, strength uh, values uh, decreasing with the increasing water uh, cement ratio. So the performance gets uh, worse. Uh, of course, the concrete uh, is in different states fresh concrete and hardened concrete. And even there is an intermediate stage, which is called hardening concrete. Uh, at, the fresh con at the fresh state, the workability of concrete is crucial. The temperature, the uh, uh, external temperature, the temperature of the fresh concrete itself, the maximum aggregate size. Uh, and of course, uh, it should be avoided to have any segregation. Uh, the other uh, phase, is the hardened concrete. Uh, the design compressive strength is important for hardened concrete. The durability characteristic 
uh, of the hardened concrete is another important uh, parameter. Uh, so here you can see the different constituents of concrete, cement, aggregates, water, admixture, uh, and uh, the composition, the quality uh, of your cement, the size, the shape, uh, the granulation, the content, the moisture content of your aggregates uh, are important parameters. The content of uh, the water content, the admixture type that you are incorporating, uh, how long you mix uh, your concrete, how you transport, how you place, how you uh, vibrate your concrete, uh, and then once placed in the mold, how you cure the concrete, and uh, the total concrete performance is affected by all these uh, steps, by all these constituents, by all these parameters. So uh, we could not say that if you use a good cement, at the end you will have a perfect concrete with a perfect performance. No, you should take all the precautions, including the curing process, the placing the vibration process, and so on. Just a curve showing how the water cement ratio and the compressive strength uh, changes uh, within the years. Uh, we started in 1950s with medium strength concrete, uh, and at that time it was uh, quite difficult to have uh, 20, 25 megapascals. But uh, within the years, for instance, when we uh, reached 1970s, medium strength concrete with higher strength values in 1980s or in 1990s, uh, concrete with much higher strength values. Uh, of course, uh, as uh, we had uh, the chance to incorporate uh, superplasticizers, we can decrease uh, this uh, ratio of water cement. And uh, after 1995, reactive powder concrete, where it's it was possible to reach uh, strength uh, reaching 800 megapascals. But uh, I just want to draw your attention to the really small uh, water cement ratio that is used to have uh, these uh, really high compressive strength values. As I told you, for the performance of concrete, placing uh, concrete is an important step. Uh, while placing the concrete into the molds, of course, a proper um, uh, vibration process is required. Uh, on site, you've probably seen different uh, types of uh, vibrators, but the most widely used uh, vibrators are the internal or the poker vibrators that you are seeing on this slide. But of course, there are proper techniques to insert your uh, vibrator into your concrete. For instance, it should be perpendicular to your concrete without with an angle as uh, shown on, uh, uh, on, this, uh, on this picture. Of course, a radius of action of the vibrator should be taken into consideration. Uh, the vibrator should be inserted about 1.5 times the radius of action to consolidate concrete properly. Otherwise, uh, the vibrations that you, you are making won't be uh, sufficient, either too small uh, and there will, uh, there will be some, uh, let's say, uh, um, sections which could not be vibrated properly. So uh, all, these, um, uh, all these precautions should be taken on site. Uh, as I told you, should be perpendicular. And of course, the bounding uh, between two layers is really crucial. So let's assume that you put concrete, you vibrated it, and then you put your next layer. But you should pay attention to the fact that the uh, vibrator should be inserted at least 10 to 15 centimeters inside the previous layer. So uh, otherwise, you can have cold joints, which is uh, which is the um, disadvantages for the structural integrity of your structure. Um, some uh, critical points, how to use vibrators properly. You should insert your vibrator quite fast, but while taking it out, while, while removing it, it should not be as fast as you did while uh, inserting it in the concrete. Uh, you should not touch the form uh, work 
or you should not uh, touch with your vibrator the rebars, the reinforcement. And uh, you should not uh, make new concrete using uh, the vibrator. Uh, another type of vibrator is the external vibrators, form vibrators. They are clamped to the formwork horizontally and vertically. Um, they are uh, mostly used, uh, to be honest, they are not very practical. So just in case uh, they should be used in thin and congested sections, arches and tunnel lining, and of course for prefabricated elements, you should use it. Uh, but uh, as they vibrate uh, the concrete from the vibration of the form, uh, much energy is wasted, not as practical as these poker or internal vibrators. Uh, a third type of uh, vibrators uh, is the surface vibrators, the screen or pen vibrators that are uh, used for long horizontal surfaces such as pavements and slabs but they are effective uh, only in uh, if the depth of concrete is up to 20 centimeters. And if you have a deeper uh, concrete, then it should be used in combination with internal uh, vibrators. Uh, vibration is critical, as I told you. Uh, if the vibration is insufficient or uh, is done uh, more than uh, the required uh, level, then you can have some problems. Uh, with insufficient vibration, you can have some honeycombs. The segregation problem could occur. Uh, by the vibration, you should get rid of the uh, entrapped air uh, of your concrete. But if you don't carry out the vibration properly, then you could not evacuate the entrapped air properly. So you can see at the end uh, these huge uh, air bubbles. Uh, lack of protecting rebars because uh, the rebars, the reinforcement could not be covered properly by concrete. There will be some voids, some uh, yeah, some voids uh, that is not uh, wanted at all. Cold joints could could uh, could be present. Cracks. Uh, common crack types are plastic shrinkage cracks, the settlement cracks, and drying shrinkage cracks. Uh, plastic shrinkage cracks uh, caused by rapid evaporation of water from the surface before the concrete sets. Wind, low humidity, uh, high temperatures, uh, concrete temperature, uh, these are parameters uh, affecting uh, the formation of plastic shrinkage cracks. And uh, these cracks may penetrate the full depth uh, of your, uh, let's say, concrete slab. Um, if you use uh, an increased quantity of fine material, then there is more risk of plastic shrinkage. By limiting your fine material and your cement binder content, uh, you can minimize uh, this risk. And in some cases, even you can incorporate it, synthetic fibers into your concrete. Uh, let me show you uh, how, what, what is the mechanism of the pl plastic shrinkage. Of course, uh, it occurs uh, when uh, the concrete is in fresh state. Uh, there is the bleeding water of concrete and there is the evaporating water. If the evaporating water uh, is higher than uh, let's say if the evaporation occurs in a way higher than the bleeding, then there is this risk. And at the end, you can see these cracks. Another type of uh, crack, uh, settlement cracks, uh, develop over embedded items, reinforcement rebars and so on. Uh, think cover over embedments, insufficient consolidation and high slam uh, could be some reasons of these cracks. Here you can see the rebars, the steel, uh, the uh, aggregates uh, try to settle. And uh, of course, there is difference of uh, stresses. Uh, there is water trying to going up. And at the end, you can see all these cracks. And these cracks reflect 
let me say the, the, the mapping of the rebars that are used, the, the mapping of the reinforcement that are used. Here you can see uh, even without a, any non-destructive uh, element, without any uh, ground penetrating radar, uh, you can see how the reinforcements are uh, placed underneath uh, the concrete. Uh, drying shrinkage cracking, uh, concrete shrinks about 1.6 millimeter for every three meter of length. Drying shrinkage depend on the water content of concrete and cold joints we determine location of drying shrinkage cracks. So it's, it's important to uh, have uh, joints uh, just to uh, predetermine uh, the location of your cracks. Uh, how to prevent the drying shrinkage cracks? You can use uh, larger coarse aggregates. Uh, you are advised not to use excessive amount of sand. Uh, you should avoid high shrinkage aggregates. Uh, you should use water reducing admixtures. And of course, as I told you, you should have a proper jointing. Curing and how to prevent cracks. Uh, of course, it's quite a detailed topic, how to uh, put concrete uh, under uh, hot weather conditions, cold weather conditions. I don't want uh, to go into the details, but just uh, some uh, precautions that could be taken in general. Uh, you should avoid direct sunshine or winds. You should make sufficient curing. Curing is really crucial. Uh, you should use largest core aggregate possible, increase coarse aggregate content, link to the other item, decrease the cement content. You should not use excessive amounts of sand and you should use water reducing admixture. Uh, here uh, you will see some examples of how to cure your concrete. Um, your, it's just lab. Uh, you should, uh, Keep the water inside the concrete as much as possible. You can use uh, wet burlaps. You can use plastic sheets. Uh, you can use water curing or chemical curing. Uh, here you can see different uh, uh, examples. Uh, as you can see, some plastic sheets are used uh, some uh, curing compounds are used. Uh, so these are different methods that you can adopt to prevent uh, the cracks. So water is uh, important for the hydration processes because when cement gets in touch with water, there are some uh, reactions going on, hydration reactions, and water is needed for that. So you should keep uh, you should keep sufficient water inside your uh, mixture, in, in, inside your fresh concrete, so that the reactions uh, take uh, the reactions take uh, place properly. Uh, and of course, as I told you, some uh, differences of stresses could occur uh, between inside the concrete and the outside uh, section of the concrete, and uh, th this can result in cracks and to avoid the cracks also, uh, curing is crucial. Durability, uh, I think you heard about the durability term. It's the ability of concrete to resist weathering action, chemical attack and abrasion while maintaining its desired engineering properties. So uh, to have a better durability, uh, low water cement ratio is, uh, is suggested. As I told you, appropriate curing uh, is important. Uh, you must strengthen your cement paste aggregate interface because this is the weakest zone and you should have a, a strong interface zone. Uh, causes of deterioration of concrete, physical causes, freeze-thaw effect, shrinkage cracks, uh, fire damages, uh, thermal effects. Uh, Physical chemical causes cracking due to the steel corrosion. Here you can see an example, the rebar, uh, which is corroded and there is the uh, expansion causing cracks in uh, your concrete. 
chemical causes uh, for the deterioration, chloride effect, seawater effect, acid effect, sulfate in groundwater, biological corrosion due to uh, microorganism. Uh, uh, to be honest, there are so many mechanisms and uh, they are quite complicated. So uh, as we have a limited time, I don't want to go into the details of all these mechanisms, but uh, all these effects could cause deterioration of your uh, concrete at the end. Just some examples. Uh, when you use expensive aggregates in your concrete, then you can have these cracks. Uh, it can be either a pool or just some stairs. Corrosion in splash zone, um, you can see how the rebars are corroded. And of course, these columns could not uh, have any structural characteristic at the end of uh, the, the, the corrosion effect. But uh, please look at uh, the picture on your right hand side. Uh, there isn't any corrosion. It's just the same element, but it's immersed uh, under water. So as there is no oxygen, corrosion didn't occur. So uh, the environmental uh, conditions, the exposure uh, conditions are quite important uh, if uh, an effect uh, occurs or not. So uh, without oxygen, without being exposed to uh, external, external air, the, 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 the other part of this element, of this column, uh, the rebar didn't corrode it. So it's strange, but this is the reality. Cavitation damage, a dam, uh, here you can see how uh, the structure in uh, the concrete has been uh, damaged. Uh, another example of cavitation damage, uh, sulfur damage, uh, here you can see, uh, uh, once exposed to sulfate attack, uh, this concrete could not be treated as a concrete. So, uh, as I told you, uh, there is uh, these exposure classes. Um, you can see the different classes and the definition, uh, definitions of each class depending on where your building is uh, is placed uh, you should take into consideration these exposure classes uh, for instance if your concrete is without reinforcement there's a class called x uh, zero if it's uh, exposed to carbonation effects uh, but uh, your elements, your building could be exposed to corrosion uh, by carbonation dry or permanently wet, or uh, carbonation wet rarely dry, or carbonation moderate humidity. It's, it's just uh, a reason of that one. For instance, there is a corrosion, uh, but if uh, there aren't the uh, required, let's say, uh, uh, parameters, then uh, the real corrosion could not occur. Of course, it's something advantageous, but uh, so it's just uh, a table given in the concrete standard EM206. Uh, and let me share another detail. Uh, in the new uh, earthquake, earthquake code, in addition to the strength classes, as I told you, it's just uh, minimum C25 for the cylinder specimens. Uh, no, uh, the exposure classes should be indicated at the project stage. So it's an important improvement for Turkey. And now uh, there is the SEN, uh, the standardization, let's say, uh, institute in Europe. Uh, regulating all the standards. And at the same level now, there is another uh, term, parameter, uh, quite widely discussed, uh, exposure resistance classes. Uh, because exposure classes are important for the durability, but you will hear uh, very soon, very frequently about the, the, this term of exposure resistance classes. Uh, just for the service life predictions, just how to determine the concrete cover, 
uh, this parameter will be an important item in addition to exposure classes. So some concrete types, uh, heavyweight concrete, lightweight concrete, impermeable concrete, permeable concrete. Uh, you can think that high consistency concrete, zero slum concrete, uh, or uh, high conductive concrete, low conductive concrete, uh, or exposed aggregate concrete, fair face concrete, or white concrete, black concrete, bacterial concrete, antibacterial concrete, high strength concrete, low strength concrete, accelerated concrete, retarded concrete by admixtures, of course, high. Uh, early strength concrete, low early strength concrete. Uh, you can judge that uh, these are contract, uh, contradictory uh, cases, but depending on your needs, sometimes you can need high strength concretes, for instance, for uh, skyscrapers, um, if you would like to demold your full work as uh, soon as possible, high early strength concrete is needed. But if you are constructing dams, uh, mass concrete, just to have a lower uh, heat uh, de development, you should use low early strength concrete. So depending on the applications, depending on your needs, you should choose. Uh, this is the same case. For instance, uh, in winter time, uh, you should uh, you should have uh, accelerated concrete, but in uh, summertime you should uh, have um, retarded concrete. Just you should have retarded setting times. So it depends really on the application types on your needs. Let's look at the different, let's say, special concrete, self-compacting concrete self-leveling concrete. Uh, this type of concrete is quite fluid, but no segregation. There are some viscosity modifying agents that are used. So even though it's quite fluid, there isn't any segregation. Uh, this type of concrete is quite workable. Uh, you uh, spend less effort to finish the surface of your concrete. If it's self-consolidating, you don't need to use any vibrator. It's pumpable and suitable for complicated forms. Just uh, an example of self-compacting concrete. Uh, you know, for concrete, there are different methods to assess the workability, the uh, flow, uh, the, the uh, uh, the slump flow test is a specific uh, workability uh, determination method for self-compacting concrete. You just measure uh, the flow of your concrete. Uh, some uh, elements, uh, of course, hardened uh, ones. Uh, you can see a perfect surface finishing and uh, no vibrators were used to have such a perfect uh, surface finishing. Uh, just you can see how fluid is uh, the concrete. Uh, it's just uh, poured without any need of uh, vibrating the concrete. It's practical to uh, reinforce uh, or for the maintenance of existing buildings. You can pump from the above of the element. Uh, you can see the result, how perfect is the surface finishing. Not only the surface, of course, inside uh, the, the covering of the rebars is perfect also. You can pump from below the element. And at the end, you can see such a perfect uh, reinforced element. Uh, some photos taken during the application of self-compacted concrete. Uh, you can see the rebars. Uh, she rules, uh, and it's um, it's suggested to use self-compacting concrete because it's not easy to vibrate appropriately if uh, it's the rebars are quite close to each other. Uh, the form work is completed. Uh, concrete is poured, and when uh, you take off the form work, you can see how perfect is your. Uh, 
put concrete. Uh, very briefly, I will just show to you a, a, an example of self-compacting concrete. Let me go fast to show you the fluidity. Uh, I think you can see how fluid is the concrete. It's a kind of huge uh, uh, U-tube uh, and uh, pouring from one side the concrete is just moving to the other side without any external uh, interaction. Just uh, it's put from here and just it's uh, self leveling and even it will rise in the other column. And as you can see, no vibrators are used. Can you see? Just from one side and just increasing uh, uh, the level from the other side. And they are measuring. So it's an example of a self-compacted concrete. Another special concrete, color concrete, where pigments are incorporated. You can see the different pigments with different colors. Of course, it's for uh, aesthetic purposes. Another special concrete, stamped concrete. Uh, it's concrete, and let me show how it is obtained. Uh, the, this roller makes concrete look paving. So just uh, moving the roller, you can obtain this pattern. And of course, you can obtain the pattern you want depending on the roller. Uh, just you can see the different patterns. You can add a brick or slate texture. You can change the texture. You can use the texture that you want. It's, it's concrete also. Different pattern. Various patterns could be used and obtained. Okay. So, uh, fiber reinforced concrete. Let me shoot another uh, video. It's just the uh, fiber reinforced concrete. As you know, uh, there are either steel fibers or synthetic fibers that could be incorporated into the concrete. Uh, there are micro, uh, micro and macro uh, fibers that could be added into the concrete. For structural purposes, you use macro uh, fibers. And uh, sometimes you can get rid of the uh, steel meshes that you should normally place under your slab. Uh, or you can use less uh, layer of uh, steel mesh uh, meshes when you use steel fibers. You can see how the steel fiber, not steel, these are um, synthetic fibers. You can see how the uh, synthetic fibers could be added in the track mixer on site. Uh, of course, uh, here you can see by bags, they are added uh, into the drum and it's mixed, it's agitated. So at the end, you will have a homogeneous distributed fiber reinforced concrete, you can see the fibers here. Uh, by these fibers, you can, of course, you know, uh, concrete uh, has good uh, compressive strength values, but the tensile strength uh, or the uh, flexural tensile or uh, splitting tensile strength characteristic of concrete is not good, you know. Uh, but to improve uh, the tensile properties of concrete, you can use fibers, synthetic or steel fibers. Uh, you can increase the toughness of your concrete. You can uh, have a more uh, 
ductile uh, concrete because especially when you have higher values of strength, uh, your concrete becomes brittle. So to have a more ductile uh, concrete, you can use steel fibers. Here, uh, this is an application for industrial floors. Uh, and uh, as I told you, uh, to minimize the use of uh, steel meshes, synthetic fibers are incorporated uh, and uh, the flexural behavior of the concrete is improved. Uh, of course, uh, all the application uh, processes should be uh, used properly to avoid any uh, possible crack formation. So you can have access to all the, these videos on our webpage. So as we have a limited time, uh, I don't want to show all the details, but uh, let me show just some steps of the application. Uh, it's a video uh, and of course the steps are explained more in detail. So uh, another uh, special concrete, 3D printed concrete. Uh, let me show another video. Even though we say concrete, it's not really concrete because you know concrete, as I told you, is made of uh, aggregates, including coarse aggregate, fine aggregates, water, cement, and so on. But uh, when you produce uh, 3D printed concrete, uh, you don't use coarse aggregates, so it's uh, you use sand, and I think it's uh, much more proper to say mortar, because um, you use nozzles, and uh, with the normal uh, mixture of concrete, you could not pour, let's say, your material. So you you can see how uh, the 3D uh, printed material is. Uh, you can see the nozzle and it's automatically formed and you can have not only one story building sometimes two or three story buildings could be could be obtained uh, on our web page also uh, you can have uh, you can look at one of uh, our articles um, and uh, one company from turkey uh, already uh, constructed a 3D printed concrete, let's say. Uh, they've uh, they produced elements and they are working on, let's say, on buildings. So these are the future trends. Uh, another special uh, concrete, pervious concrete, Normally, of course, for the durability performance of concrete, it's uh, it's required to have concrete with uh, with uh, with uh, good impermeable properties. It's what we want in general. But as I told you, depending on your needs, sometimes you need concrete with uh, permeability properties. This is pervious concrete, uh, which is meant. Here you can see the uh, water is poured on uh, the concrete, but it's absorbed uh, by the concrete because there is such a system that uh, water can pass through concrete. And of course, uh, it's a system, uh, the, the sub base, uh, everything should be calculated, not only the concrete, not only the slab, not only the, the uh, uh, payment, but uh, it should be uh, treated as a system, including the drainage system. Here you can see, here you can see the water and all of a sudden water disappears because it's filtered. It's going through concrete and the, the drainage system. So it's quite important, uh, especially uh, to avoid floods uh, for uh, parkings, for, for uh, pathways, even though it should not be exposed to really uh, high traffic. Um, but as I told you, for pathways, for uh, parkings, it's, it's a quite a good option. 
another uh, special concrete, luminescent concrete. You will see it's for aesthetic purposes. Uh, here you can see the exposed aggregate and polished aggregates used for swimming pool surroundings, garden path and patios, pavements, and so on. Uh, you can see at the end, you can have uh, such, such aesthetic uh, views in the dark, no stray light. So here you can see the pathway made of this special concrete in the, in the daytime and the, in the evening, how, how it is. So, and finally, concrete pavements. Uh, I mentioned many items such as sustainability, circular economy, uh, of course, this is the new trend because uh, we should use our uh, sources in a proper way. And concrete may payments make roads more sustainable. Uh, less global warming uh, is, uh, is, uh, could be uh, ensured when concrete roads are used, higher resilience to climate change, sustainable water management, and 100% uh, circularity could be, uh, of course, fulfilled. So, uh, AMCO, uh, European Rhythmics Concrete Organization, is a member of this organization called UPAVE. It's the European uh, Concrete Payments uh, Association, and I invite you to visit uh, the site of uh, in, in addition to the website of THPB, to visit the website of uh, AMCO and UPAVE. Uh, and uh, on the UPAVE, you will see uh, the many advantages of the concrete payments. And of course, concrete uh, barriers are important also for the, for the near future. Uh, I'm almost done with, uh, with my presentation. I just want to share with you two links. The first one is thpb.org is the uh, official website of our association. And the second link is a newly uh, activated uh, uh, link, uh, thpbacademy.org. It's a link, it's a website where you can find different technical papers, different, uh, let's say, technical progresses uh, concerning the concrete and cement uh, industries. So thank you very much for your, uh, for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, very comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. I think it was eye-opening for civil engineering students. Uh, we all see concrete uh, production through, uh, when you walk over the city, but uh, you don't really understand it until you see this um, wide range of applications. As you can see, concrete is made up of uh, like aggregates, uh, cement, water, uh, and admixtures, and you can combine these in such a fashion that you can obtain uh, concrete for practically all sorts of purposes. And we've seen these applications in today's presentation. In addition, it was really good to see uh, the progress of um, or developments, innovations in Turkey. Uh, since I graduated in 1990s, I, 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 I've seen the uh, strength versus years uh, slide on your presentation. It's, Really good to see the progress, to see the uh, increasing strength in uh, production. It's, um, I think it's, uh, Turkey is doing a really good job, and the Turkish Ready Mix Concrete Association is doing an excellent job in uh, promoting research and also uh, for organizing all these uh, meetings. And I would definitely like to thank all the participants who were uh, watching our presentation. And right now, I would like to ask the audience if they have any questions regarding today's presentation. Uh, 
So I would like to ask a question myself. Uh, Aslanım, uh, what would you recommend for today's, for the uh, civil engineering students uh, who are just uh, in their second year or maybe in third year? How uh, should they develop themselves uh, for preparing for the uh, for the industry? Since you are a part of the in industry and you can, are there any tips that you can provide for them? Uh, I think, of course, they should focus on their courses, uh, but uh, they should not be limited uh, by the content of the courses. Uh, as I told you, uh, I can invite them to uh, look at the different uh, websites because as THPB or AMCO, uh, or of course, there are other uh, global associations uh, where uh, the uh, technological uh, developments, progresses and innovations are shared with the stakeholders. So, uh, of course, there are uh, fundamentals, there are the basic uh, details that they should be aware of. But of course, they, I recommend them to follow the innovations. For instance, as I told you, uh, once they graduate, I think, uh, and if they would like to be part of the, uh, let's say, uh, construction materials business, then they, they will hear about uh, CO2 emissions, carbon neutrality, uh, green deal, uh, circular economy, circularity, sustainability, durability. Uh, and I think uh, even uh, at the, this stage, they should get familiar with these terms. Uh, thank you. It's, uh, I feel the same way. Uh, the world is changing, the needs are changing, and there are these new materials uh, which are being rolled out into the market every, every year. I see, I've seen some of them here. I've seen others like translucent uh, concrete or uh, textile reinforced concrete. So it's... Um, there are different developments and it's really exciting and I find it um, both instructive and, you know, and it's fun, actually. It's one of the things that, that's good about our, our jobs. Uh, as civil engineers, uh, we sort of shape the world and uh, you see these uh, fantastic structures and they were all built by civil engineers and, and seeing these developments and being a part of it and uh, developing yourself is, I think, um, something that you should, you should aim for. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, I would like to uh, thank you once again and all the people who helped organize this meeting. Um, and I would like to forward you for the final remarks. Uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure for us, for THPB, to have this uh, webinar uh, with, with you, with uh, uh, Istanbul Culture University. Thank you very much for, uh, for this collaboration. Thank you very much. And um, I think it's time to finish the uh, webinar. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too.